how, but also records came out pretty quick after they were recorded at this point. Yeah. Did it, did it just seem like a whirlwind to you? My entire life was a whirlwind. Um, I would always tell my husband, I, for like four or five years, I would go to sleep and not remember what state I was in when I woke up. Because I would do a TV show in the morning and a radio thing in the afternoon and be on a plane and be someplace else. That was my life. And, and did you initially love it? Initially, I, I loved the music. I didn't like a lot of the things that came with it. Um, I think it's, it was very, very hard in <coughs> 1964 to be a woman in the music business. Um, men dealt with groupies and they loved it. They'd invite them up to their rooms. I could beat them off with a stick. And then you had bands to contend with and radio hosts and everybody else that was trying to get a piece of you. It was, it was a very hard life. Um, I think it had a lot to do with the tough image. Kept, kept a lot of people away. You know, which was really important for survival. Um, plus, I think it was it was very difficult back then because I truly believe that a lot of men were considered artists, whether or not other people wrote for them, where women were considered products. And I always found that difficult to accept because rock and roll has no sex to me. Maybe my thinking screwed up, but I don't think so. You know? Did, did um, thinking about what Shadow Morton said about that you should have gotten an Oscar, did he recognize the group as being artists? I think so, but I really think it was um, more of a reflective period on his part. I think he, I mean, the Shangri-Las had extremely strong harmonies, and that that was a given before George was there or not. Uh, we just were. The, um, you have two sets of sisters, which is it, it can create an amazing vocal. Um, I think, in hindsight, I think more of that came down. 